9.1 Pythagorean Theorem. Pythagoras of Samos was a Greek mathematician and philosopher who discovered one of the most famous rules in mathematics, the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem states, in any right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Algebra states, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now each side of the right triangle has its own name. The legs that are not opposite of the hypotenuse are both legs and the longest side is the hypotenuse. The one that you should identify first, always and forever, is the hypotenuse. Always look for the length that is opposite of the 90 degree angle. The 90 degree angle points at the hypotenuse. It's also the longest side. You should identify that first. Then the other two side lengths could be A or B in any order. So now let's try some examples. Find the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle. So first thing you should label is the side that's opposite of the hypotenuse, which is C, and they have labeled it with a C for us, but otherwise we would be on our own. Now eight and 15 can be A or B in any order, so let's make eight A and 15 B. So now following our pattern, we do eight squared plus 15 squared, equals c squared, 64 plus 225 equals c squared. I need my calculator. 64 plus 225 is 289 equals c squared. And then what's the opposite of a square? The opposite of the square is a square root. The square and the square root cancel, and the square root of 289 is 17. So this side length is 17 units long. You go ahead and pause this video and try the second one on your own. All right, let's try example number two. Find the missing length of the triangle. Now pay attention to who is who. Here's the 90 degree angle, and the 90 degree angle is always opposite of C. That's the first length that you should always identify. And what we're doing is we're working backwards now, and we're going to find the length of A, and they provided the length of B. So we've got a squared, that's the part that's missing, plus 2.1 squared equals 2.9 squared. Sorry, that's running into the second example. Now we square each of those, a squared plus 2.1 squared, 2.9 squared is 8.41. And now on these ones, we're trying to solve for a squared, so we need to take away the 4.41. So we're going to subtract 4.41 from each side. So now we've got a squared equals 8.41 minus 4.41, which is 4. And then take the square root of both sides, and a equals 2. Pause this video and try the second one on your own.
Okay, continuing on. So it says, what information is required to use the Pythagorean theorem? Check all that apply. Do you need to know that it's a right angle? Do you need to know all three angles? Do you need to know two angles? Do you need to know two side lengths? And do you need to know a hypotenuse? So which of these are required piece of pieces of information? So the first one that is a required piece of information is that it must have a right angle. The Pythagorean theorem only works if it's a right triangle. That is the only time. Do you need to know all three angles? No, we haven't been talking about angles at all. No angles required. Two angles? Nope, two angles are not required. Two side lengths? Yes, two side lengths are required. It has to be any two side lengths. It could be a leg and a hypotenuse or two legs. It wouldn't matter. And that means that you are not required to know the hypotenuse. It needs to be a right triangle, a right angle, and have two side lengths given. And then it provides you a third side length. The Pythagorean theorem is for finding missing sides only. It has nothing to do with the, it has nothing to do with the idea that you're trying to get uh, angles or anything like that. It's for missing sides specifically. All right, then um, there's something that you can use. It's called a Pythagorean triple. A Pythagorean triple is a set of three numbers that will always create a right triangle. And these are ones that appear quite often. And they're ones that you can use, mul they're multiples to make more right triangles. So for example, one of them is three, four, five. So if we were to test that one, three squared plus four squared is nine plus 16. Nine plus 16 is 25 and 25 is five squared. So this makes a right triangle always and forever. And if you test all of those triples, they will each make up a right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. And like you can see, you can uh, scale it up. So if you have a 3, 4, 5 is what we call it, a 3, 4, 5 triangle. You can have a 6, 8, 10 or a 9, 12, 15. Any multiple of 3, 4, 5 uh, together will make a right triangle. Okay, let's try um, to answer this question. What happens if your answer is not a perfect square? Something that we've practiced before and we're gonna practice again is to simplify your radical. You can provide your answer as a decimal, but in most cases, it was it's more polite to use a simplified radical. So here we go. We've got seven X and 14. So we've got our C and then this could be my A and my B. You could leave X as X if you want to, whichever you prefer. So we've got seven squared plus X squared equals 14 squared. Seven squared is 49 and 14 squared is 196 minus 49. 196 minus 49 is 147. Now, when we take the square root of both sides, the square root of 147 is not a nice number. The square root of 147 is approximately 12. I'm going to use that approximate symbol. Is 12, and let's do two decimal places. 12.12 if you use a calculator to get the decimal answer. But what we would like to do is we'd like to leave this as an exact answer and not cut off any decimals. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a factor tree of 147. So 147 divided by anything, so it divides by 7 and 21. 7 is prime, so you always circle your primes. And 21 divides by 7 again. 7 and 3. 7 is prime and 3 is prime. 
So if you recall, what you're going to do is rewrite that radical as its prime factors, 7 times 7 times 3. And you're looking for pairs of 2. So that pair of 2 comes out front as one single pair, so it reduces to 7 root 3. That's the most polite answer in this case is to reduce that radical. So let's try simplifying these radicals. So make your factor tree from 180. Um, you can do it by maybe 10 and 18. 5 and 2, those are both radic or both prime. 18, how about 9 and 2? Two? 2 is prime, but 9 is not 3 and 3. So then this rewrites, and we want to group our, our stuff together that matches. So 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. Pairs of 2. In this case, because there's two pairs of 2, you multiply them together, a 2 times a 3. So it's going to be a 6 root 5. Pause this video and try uh, the square root of 112 and the square root of 72 on your own. Four root seven and six root two. All right, example number four, verifying that a triangle is right. So if you take a look at these two triangles, there is not a 90 degree angle in the corner, but you can take a guess as to where you might think the right angle is supposed to go. You can kind of see it. And we're going to check and see if these are right triangles using the Pythagorean theorem. If the Pythagorean theorem is true, then yes, it is a right triangle. So we're going to test it. So I think that the 90 degree angle should go here. So I think that should be my C. This should be my A and this should be my B. And we're going to test. Is 8 squared plus 7 squared, is that question mark equal to the square root of 113 squared. Notice that I put the square root of 113 in parentheses because we're squaring that entire thing. So now 8 squared is 64. 7 squared is 49, question mark. The cool part about this one is when you square a square root, they cancel each other, and you're left with just 113. And 64 plus 49, guess what, is 113. So 113 does equal 113. So yes, this is a right triangle. So yes, that is a 90 degree angle. If those two numbers don't match each other, it doesn't matter if it's 113 or not. If those two numbers don't match each other, then no, it is not a right triangle. So let's try the second one. I think the right angle is supposed to go here, so I think this is supposed to be my C and my A and my B. So is 36 squared plus 15 squared, is that equal to 4 square root of 95 squared? 36 squared is 1296, 225. Now on this one, the square applies to both pieces. 
So the four squared is 16 and the square root of 95 cancels. So it's times 95. So then one, two, nine, six plus two, 25 equals 16 times 95. One, five, two, zero. These are all question marks, still not quite there. One, two, nine, six plus 225 is one, five, two, one. And that is not equal to one, five, two, zero. So no, not right triangle. That is not a 90 degree angle. Oops, I'm sorry, I have my, my picture in the way. There you go. 36, uh, now you can see it again. So 36 plus 15 squared, distribute the square into each piece, 16 times 95. And that, that is not a right triangle. 1,521 1, is not equal to 1,520. All right, our last example. Find the area of the isosceles triangle. I see it's 17 and 17, and the base uh, measure is 16. I'm going to move my picture over here. So recall to find the area of a triangle. You do the base times the height divided by, the ch by 2. So our base in this case is 16. I'm not sure of my height and we're going to divide by 2. So the piece that we need to figure out is the height. I can see that the height is inside of a right triangle. This right triangle has a side length uh, hypotenuse C of 17. I can see that the bottom length is half of 16 or 8, and the A length or one of the other leg lengths is H. So our setup is going to be 8 squared plus h squared equals 17 squared to get our height. So 8 squared 64 plus h squared um, 17 squared. 17 squared is 289 minus 64. 289 minus 64 is 225. So the square root of 225 is a nice number. The square root of 225 is 15, if I'm not mistaken, just to check. Yep, 15. So that means that this h height is 15, and now we can substitute it in for h. So then we've got 16 times 15 divided by 2. 16 times 15 is 240 divided by 2 and 240 divided by 2 is 120 and this is an area so 120 meters square